Well, uh, joining us now, uh, Utkarsh Mehta, partner at Edifice uh, Engineering and Mayur Mehta, project manager uh, behind the demolition of the Supertech um, uh, Twin Towers. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a hectic, I'm sure, very emotional, busy day for you. But in a sense, really, this has been a breathtaking spectacle. It's been in, you know, engineering marvel where everybody, millions across the country, sat across their screens to watch this. Let me just ask, in the end, has everything gone according to plan? Have you done your, you know, post-demolition checkups and are you satisfied? Uh, yes, uh, what we had envisaged at the beginning, on the day one, when we start for design, and today when we are done with the blast, we are absolutely satisfied with the way the fall has come, with the way uh, the debris have been generated. As of now, if you see, emerald is completely safe. There is nothing which has come out of the compound wall of the uh, twin towers, which is in the roadside. There is no debris, it's not hit the compound wall as well. The only portion which was hit is the is a part of ATS uh, uh, wall, wall boundary. boundary wall. So it's an immaculate piece of work with the limitation of space what we had. Then the Gale pipeline on this side, the uh, Aster 2 on the other side. Uh, we had a very limited space. With this str stronger building, it was difficult with a lot of shear walls. It was difficult, but then uh, the way Joe has designed it, the way Joe envisaged it after the uh, test blast, mm. he changed a couple of things. Uh, which again helped us. It was never planned. The test blast was never planned. Uh, with When we started preparing the structure, it was almost after a couple of months mm. when we thought we should go for this test blast. And then we went to uh, authorities and uh, teams and then we got that permission to do it and we did it. So that was really important uh, because that gave us a lot of understanding of the structure more. Mm. There was physical look, then we started working on it, so we found things are getting heavier than the, what we had envisaged during our first round. So said and done, uh, today if you ask me, we are really happy uh, with the way it has come down. Uh, there is no second thought that there is anything more, probably, I mean if you ask me to do the same building tomorrow, we will have a couple of changes, yes, I would not say no. Like the, Like maybe we would have added more wraps, like if you see the video, uh, this is the first impression what we have done, we have actually not sat together and analyzed it, but if you see the video, the Sian has come down completely mm. and then the top three floors which we did not blast toppled. Ah, it, okay. it, it's never a, it, it never fall like this, it came like this straight and then it has toppled. If you see the video again and again you will be able to see that. And that's what has, <coughs> that's what has hit the ATS uh, compound wall. Got it. So, but then it was that a toppling action. Yeah, we we had already we had anticipated. It. Yeah, we had informed the, uh, that there is a probability, and we are there to in case there is a we'll get it. is responsible for that. So, can the residents live in their homes in these neighbouring areas? Can they live in their homes tonight? Would you put Definitely. your own family if you had a? I I would say yes. I am hundred percent. I am staying in Emerald. Okay. I am staying in Emerald since last six seven months. I've rented one house. As you will be staying there tonight and sleeping soundly, ma'am. With my family, with my wife and my son, both are here. They came here to see the blast. So definitely I am going to stay there in the same flat in, on which I am staying right now. There can be no greater confidence builder than that. Yeah. But can I just ask you, could you explain to our viewers what this waterfall implosion is? We know it's an implosion because it has to fall inwards. This was an extremely challenging uh, demolition. You have done many in the past, but unlike Kerala, uh, there were no buildings in the near vicinity so close by. So could you just explain to us what the waterfall concept is? Yeah. Basically the waterfall concept that Say approximately there are 2700 odd columns in the building. So there never each column there will be a time delay difference. Mm. So for, from point, point 0.1 milliseconds if the single column blasts, the second column another will blast after maybe another milliseconds delay. So it starts from the basement B1 and ends at the apex of 30th floor on the last time near the Esther 2. Mm. So that ignition time, it took seven seconds to why ignite all. Have, why is it required that you have a... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll explain you on that. Okay. It, it, it is just for the, if you blast the two, three columns at a time, then the fall automatically will diversify, it will go in some other direction. Got it. So that is the reason it is a waterfall effect and from Kian, which is the basement from where we have started, 
it is ignited and the top one ignited after the 7 second so the yeah. impact also on Definitely the ground right. now yeah, now you got my point the small and so small and exactly exactly really ma'am exactly ma uh, frag fragmented mass is coming down on the ground hmm. rather than impacting it at one go hmm. we are fragmenting it into portions hmm. and so it is impacting the ground in hmm. in a period of 7 seconds in our dictionary 7 seconds is too long a period yeah. so the vibrations are caused in milliseconds here we are taking 7 odd seconds for the structure from the first point to the last point grounding it and also was this a, a challenge in the sense that uh, you were working on bringing down a building that had been super enforced because it was built in a seismic zone yes it was the, that was the biggest challenge i mean that's how we we went for more number of floors more number of explosives in the basements so that's where we analyzed that the building is strong enough rightly said seismic zone 5 and then 40 story yeah. so two two things to look at uh, so though it was still at 32 but then the foundations were built to go up to 40 stories so yeah. the basements the ground levels were strong enough mm. so that it can go as high as 40 story. Okay. So looking at both the perspectives, yes, it was uh, uh, strong Now enough. that the demolition is out of the way, what do we need to look at in terms of, you know, environmental uh, fallouts of this, the terms of the dust, in terms of the pollution, in terms of the debris, in terms of how it affects the water table, in terms of how it affects the air, how it affects the plants around us? For the pollutions and all, I mean, to be very frank, I, I need to get data from the NADA authority tomorrow because okay. we've done a lot of monitoring. Even we've done our own monitoring, but the authentic data would we would get it from NADA authority because they have stationed lots of uh, equipments around and there are already fixed equipments by them. But then on the face, what we understood is the, the quality of air did not deteriorate to the extent it was envisaged. Hmm. And the dust cloud also, which everyone felt, that it, it would be, you know, humongous and it would take mm, days to clear off. Mm. You know, we were asked how many days it will take mm. to clear it off. We, we used to tell it 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, max to max. And then if the wind is good enough, it can go still beyond 10 minutes. And dust. that's what we saw. Yeah, that's what it has to settle. It has you know, to but settle. the dust, you know, uh, hasn't settled on the whole controversy about this building, right? And there are, there are arguments made about people who, you do hear people saying that, look, now that it's come up, which is what I think the builders were betting on, now that it's come up, why bring it down? There's going to be an environmental cost. There's going to be a wastage, etc., right. etc. Et uh, but I want to ask you, now that we have done this building successfully, do you think it sets a precedent going forward and a message is sent out to, you know, um, the real estate developers that uh, it has been done in the past and it can be done safely again? It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is a precedent in terms of it can be done, yes, and it can be done safely. That's where we will say regarding uh, why this precedent is set, we would rather not be able to comment why. Because as I told you, I mean, we, we are contractors and I would never go and ask someone, a client of mine, why are you getting this down? It's my business to get it down. Whether it but is it can be demolished in a safe manner. Debris can be, uh, you know, disposed, disposed in of in an environmentally friendly manner. Correct. We can bring down uh, costs yes. both in terms of money, etc. Yeah, that's true. This, this Even will... though this is the one example also, see, there are lots of things. India got independence in 1947. And the, we have started uh, establish our infrastructure. There are lots of things which is now 75 years old. And this is the best technology and the economical te technology to bring down everything in fast, speedy, as well as economical manner. Okay. So that is also one, one point of scenario that if 100 meter tall, any government uh, things are there. there with, are this, with this means you can do it fast, safe and 100% sure. So this is the textbook case. Thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. much.